What's up YouTube? In today's video, we're going to be looking at branch prediction. Now this is a hardware feature, if you will, of the modern CPUs. It's something I talked about in my performance in .NET videos part two, I think. I'll put a link to that over here. In this video, I want to show you essentially how to make or take advantage of modern CPU hardware. In this case, primarily branch prediction. Now branch prediction entails a few other features, hardware performance features, if you will, that we'll talk about today, but essentially it's branch prediction that I'm focusing on. And I'll show you some code eventually that shows you the, the differences in terms of performance between things that utilize the take advantage of the feature and ones that don't, right? So this is gonna be more of me talking, trying to explain to the extent that I'm able to the hardware optimizations or features we have in modern CPU architecture. The modern CPU is extremely fast in the sense that you, know, you have two and a half, three, three and a half gigahertz CPUs. So essentially the, the clock is ticking, you know, so many 10 to the power of minus nine times a second. However, it takes many clock cycles, many clock ticks to execute a single CPU instruction. This is like at the opcode, you know, the x86 or 64 opcode level. Each opcode, each instruction, CPU instruction, takes multiple CPU cycles to execute. However, while the CPU are, CPUs are getting faster, they're also getting more capable. Their hardware is becoming more capable. So while a single CPU instruction could take four, eight, 16 cycles, and even more, what is the hardware doing? Or how can they best utilize that hardware while these instructions are executing? That's essentially kind of the, the driver or the motivation behind some of the optimizations I'm going to talk about today. One feature is called pipelining. Pipelining is essentially the hardware having a pipeline of instructions. Kind of think of it like a conveyor belt of source, not, not exactly, but in that concept, where while the core, CPU core, is busy operating on this one instruction, maybe the hardware could multitask in parallel simultaneously do other work using other parts of the hardware. What the pipelining feature is doing is it's taking, it's looking ahead of the current instruction. So if, it's, if the core is executing a certain instruction, let's say you've got lines of code going down like this and it's come over here, a certain line, the hardware is looking at instructions ahead of time. It's looking ahead and is building a pipeline based on all the instructions that are coming from this point forward so that it could potentially, using the same clock text, start to operate and execute certain instructions looking ahead. Now, when I say execute, it's not, think of it like a, the, the code that is executing on the core itself is being committed in, in the sense of, let's say, a database. Right? It's being committed. while the Execution that takes place in the pipeline is put in a buffer. And I'll explain why that happens and or why uh, it's not quite committed. Right? It's, it's there, it's waiting on hold, and if things work out, it can use all the work is done and you're kind of, you've jumped ahead of time, right, in that sense. As in, if you're executing this instruction here and the pipeline has executed the next four instructions, it's not quite executed yet. But when the time comes, and it says, okay, I need the result of this execution. It's already been done. On the face of it, that's, it seems logical, I hope. I mean, I am hope I'm able to convey the idea correctly with my hand waving here. What happens if the instruction contains a branch, a, a conditional statement? And that's the topic of this discussion. The CPU utilizes a fe another feature, hardware feature called branch prediction. What it's doing is it's maintaining a history of prior executions of the conditional statements. And in this history, now the buffer is called, BTB is called a branch table buffer. It's a very small buffer con consisting of multiple rows or records of four or more bytes, sometimes 32 bytes, mostly mainly four bytes. And essentially this history is helping it determine or predict what's gonna happen next. So let's say it has this, some history in this buffer and now it hits upon your branch prediction. This is the pipeline. And this sort of it hits upon a conditional statement and it's gonna use that BTB to determine whether this condition 
is going to be true or false. It's predicting, right? So predictions can go wrong. But that prediction helps it to say then, okay, so while it's trying to build this pipeline of, of executed instructions, it's going to say, okay, in this case, this, is, this condition is going to go true. That's what it's predicting. So it's going to execute the code in the, in the true branch, right? And if those instructions need data, that the, the prefetcher will then take or go prefetch the data that is required for these ahead of time lines of code that need to be executed. And all this is in the hope that a certain branch will come true based on a certain prediction. So now this the branch prediction is a sort of a global feature as a global to the CPU. It's not specific to this conditional statement that you are in currently. Right? So, so it's not maintaining by conditional statement some sort of a history. It's just maintaining a history of branches and whether the true branch was taken or the false branch which was taken and based on that, it predicts that this time is going to take the true or the false branch. And this prediction, of course, will, will keep changing based on what the outcome really occurs, what the outcome really is. It is a bit complicated, but it's also very simplistic, as in it's not, it's not using AI or something. It's not like that at that level. Right? It's simple hardware with a buffer, and it maintains a history, and then it's, it doesn't even know the history is coming from which branches. So that history may not apply to this branch, but eventually while it's executing this branch, let's say in a loop, then that history now contains information about this branch and the predictions become better, right? So the advantage to the branch prediction is that if the prediction turns out correct, then because the pipeline has pre-executed a whole host of instructions ahead of time, then all of that just fits right in and gets committed, meaning it's already executed the code, right? So it's not like the CPU to wait for some time. However, if the prediction is missed, then even though it's done all this work with a certain prediction and a certain code path, that entire workload has to be thrown away and has to now start executing the, the actual branch that it took. At that point, you're not benefiting from multiple CPU instructions occurring per clock cycle because you've gone back to the fact that there was no branch prediction, there was no pipelining, and it has to rebuild all of that instruction again and again, right? So how do you take advantage of this branch prediction feature? Of course, then the prefetcher and the pipelining, all that put together in C Sharp, language like C Sharp. It's very simple, actually, and I'll show you some code here. But before I go down to the code level, I also want to talk about some optimization that the C Sharp JIT compiler has. The JIT compiler has a feature called, I think it's called branch flattening or forget the actual feature, the name of the feature. It's got, it's got different names, but essentially what it's doing is it's flattening the branching or conditional branching. It's not quite flattening as you would imagine. What it's doing is it's looking at a bunch of conditional statements and based on what it sees and how it can discern, and this is the JIT compiler, so it's doing it just in time, it might reorder the conditional statements in such a way that the more frequently executed conditional statement comes to the top. And it might even swap out the, the conditional within the conditional statement, such that, you know, if let's say you have a true something, and it's, it's trying to ensure that the true part branch is executed the most often, it'll flip the conditions around and all the other code around to match. So it's, it's fairly smart, but may not be a hotspot optimizing compiler, like let's say in Java. Right? So I don't think it's got to that level where it's, a, it's looking at hotspots. It's just JIT compiling. In other words, just in time. Now in .NET Core, we have tiered compilation, which is a slightly different feature. And I'm not sure if the tiered compilation does some sort of a hotspot, hotspot analysis and rewrites the code in a way that's removing the hotspots or not. I'm not I haven't read much uh, into the depths of that. But uh, keep in mind, the JIT compiler also has some um, optimizations for branching, right? But it's not what we're talking about here, even though that may be occurring. I want to just talk about the branch predictions. And once you understand how the hardware works, I'm hoping that you will then be able to take advantage of this. Now, these are minor or micro optimizations. They may not, depending on how much data you have and how much data you're operating on, it may not give you a huge amount of advantage. Okay, so let's look at the code now. What I have here is two arrays, 
that are pre-initialized in this global setup, so this is not part of the timing. One ray is ordered numbers, and one ray is unordered. In other words, I shuffle the ordered array, and then I have an un or random ordered set of numbers. I've got two benchmarks. One is marked as a baseline. This is the ordered array. So it's iterating over the ordered array. Essentially what it's doing is it's looking at, it's iterating over the, the items in the array. And if the item is greater than the midpoint, the midpoint is halfway, half of the numbers here, whatever the number is. If the number is greater than the midpoint, it will do it this way. If not, it will go the else part, right? So in this case, it's the ordered. So the baseline is the ordered. The unordered is doing the same thing. It's just using a different, the random ordered array list. Now, if I were run to run this benchmark, I will get an output like this. Now, since the baseline is our ordered array, you can see that the unordered array is six times slower than our baseline. Of course, these are in microseconds. So you've got 610 microseconds versus 3,728 microseconds. So that's three milliseconds. Right, and there's not no any additional garbage collections or anything of like that happening here in either of the two cases. So it's a small improvement, as I said. One, it's nice to know and understand how the hardware works and then maybe potentially take advantage of that knowledge and use it to your advantage. And two, maybe sometimes you are in a situation where you're trying to squeeze out all the performance you possibly can. And maybe in this case, having an ordered collection or an ordered set of data coming from your database might help you get that extra benefit that you're trying to look at. Of course, optimizations like this will be beneficial only in hotspots, meaning code that is frequently used and that is causing you the most pain in terms of performance. And maybe a small optimization like this will then end up giving you a huge benefit because it's a hotspot, right? Or hot path. So anyway, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed what you learned here today. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. If you have comments, please put them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.